it's Jessie V. I hope that in today's video we have a lot of theater kids watching, okay? I just hope because this video would be super interesting for you guys. If you are a theater kid or you like performing or singing or dancing or doing plays, comment the theater mask emoji. Don't we have one of those? I'm pretty sure we do. We do. It's a blue and yellow mask. Love it. Comment that down below if you are a theater kid because in today's video I'm talking about all of the really creepy superstitions that have to do with being on stage doing a performance and there's one story about a ballerina in green that is terrifying to me and I cannot get it out of my head and I will never look at ballerinas the same. Before I get started I just want to mention that today's video is sponsored by Merge Dragons. This is a free-to-play mobile game that is available on all devices. You guys know how much I love mythical creatures and fantasy elements and dragons are so dear to me. So in the game you can merge dragon eggs, trees, treasures, stars, magical flowers, and even dragons, all to create new incredible things. You can solve puzzles and heal the land. And one of the coolest things is that you can merge eggs to hatch dragons. And those dragons will help you heal the land, okay? We're all working in it together. You'll be figuring out challenging puzzle levels and you'll collect tons of bounty to bring back to your dragon camp. And another really cool thing is that you can grow your camp. You collect and merge your bounty to foster your dragons. And guys, there's not just one dragon or two dragons or three dragons. You can collect over 500 unique dragons. Did you hear that correctly? I said 500. You can also take part in exciting events every single month. And there's mini games, including treasure tower and dragon breeding. So like if you've ever in your life been like, gosh, I wish dragons were real. I wish I had my own dragons. Now is literally your chance. I have really been enjoying playing this game in my free time. And you should see the smile on my face as soon as I collect a new unique dragon. So you can download Merge Dragons for free by clicking on the link down below in my description, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. I'm so excited for you guys to play. I know you're gonna love it. Thank you so much once again to Merge Dragons for sponsoring today's video. Link down below. All right, so let's get into today's video talking about theater superstitions. And if you're a theater kid, you may know a couple of these. The first is about flowers. One of the most complex theater traditions relates to the gifting of flowers. It matters what kind of flower you give the actors and when you give it to them. If any of you guys have ever been in a show, whether it's dancing or performing a play, usually your family gives you flowers after, right? And apparently the flowers that you're gifted impacts your performance. Performance. For example, giving an actor a bouquet of flowers before a show could tempt fate for accidents and poor performance. Unless it's opening night, which apparently is good luck. And the end of a show's run in many ways is considered a form of death, as the cast and crew put the show to rest on closing night. So there's a tradition of giving the lead actors and director flowers from the grave after the curtain falls on the final show, and this just signifies the passing of the production. So people will go to like a graveyard and pick flowers and will give it to the performers at the end of the show, which is like eerie, but kind of cool. The thing was, historically, way back in the day, people didn't have a lot of money to buy new bouquets of flowers. So people would go to a graveyard and steal bouquets in front of graves from families that had put them there because they didn't want to buy any new flowers. So I don't recommend doing that. Another legend is that you should never wear green on stage. Many consider green to be the color of wealth, prosperity, health, and growth. However, if you're a fan of color theory or believe in the spiritual aspects of colors, you know that green actually has a dark side too. Envy, jealousy, death, hatred. But there's actually another reason why actors will not wear this color on stage. Back in the 1650s, there was a playwright named Moliere who wrote many controversial works of art, and his last show was in 1673, and he went on stage wearing this beautiful bright green outfit. And throughout the entire performance, he was coughing and gasping for breath, and people were trying to help him, but he insisted on completing the show, and he soon collapsed and died, which obviously shocked the audiences. And since then, actors have avoided wearing the same color on stage stage, fearful they may suffer the same fate. If you're a theater kid or a dancer, 
Comment a green emoji if you have worn green on stage before. I'm just curious. There's also another story I was able to find about this ballerina who was obsessed with dancing. Obviously, she's a ballerina, but she took it to the next level. Her favorite color was green, and so she would wear her green tutu everywhere she went. The grocery store, school, different events. So not just only on stage. And the other thing was she would wear this satchel around her, and inside of it was a music box. And so everywhere she went, she would constantly play this music box. And even the way she walked was like she was dancing. She had a little jump to her step. She would twist around instead of just turning around normally. It was like she wanted to be a ballerina always, not just on stage, but in her real life. And because she was constantly moving and dancing, she became incredibly exhausted after doing this for such a long period of time. And so one day while she was on stage spinning and spinning, she just eventually collapsed and died. And like I said, she was wearing her green tutu when that happened. And so this also added to the legend of green just must be a really unlucky color to wear on stage. But an even more creepy fact is that they buried her in a graveyard and so many people came to her funeral and they actually buried her with her music box because she would never part with it. And so legend goes that if you go and visit her grave at night, you will hear the music music box playing way under the ground. It's like this muffled music. And other people say that if you lean your head up really closely to the grass, you can hear her still turning round and round in her grave, which is terrifying to think about. Okay, there's another legend about not whistling backstage. So apparently in the late 1700s, before there was electricity, the backstage staff would have to signal for scene changes or music changes or set changes with a whistle. And especially for set changes, everyone would have to get out of the way and so them whistling, actors would know to like clear the path. But sometimes with those set changes, people would get crushed, things would go wrong, especially if they didn't hear the whistle. So nowadays, even though we have electricity and things go a lot more smoothly, people tell others to not whistle backstage because it could attract accidents or even tragedies. I'm sure any theater kid has heard this one. It's that you should never say the word Macbeth in the theater. Shakespeare's Macbeth was first performed around 1606 and was doomed right out the gate. Apparently, a local coven of witches took offense to the playwright's use of real magical incantations and placed a curse on the whole production. They said that apparently Shakespeare was putting spells into the play that he didn't really fully understand and they were real spells, and so yeah, the witches were mad. And shortly after its debut, the actor portraying Lady Macbeth suddenly died, forcing Shakespeare himself to assume the role. And real daggers would mysteriously replace harmless props. And one of those daggers even ended up killing one of the actors. It was a man who was playing King Duncan. And it just seemed like every single time this show was performed, there would be deaths, there would be accidents, instruments would break. It was just ridiculous. So you're just not supposed to say Macbeth in the theater. There's also a legend about always leaving a ghost light on whenever you leave the theater. Many theaters feature an orchestra pit between the stage and the audience, essentially a small cliff just asking to be accidentally walked off. So the lone light provides visibility near and around the stage. So if any staff are around near closing time, they're not gonna fall into areas without seeing. But in regards to the ghost light's supernatural function, many believe the emotions and energy on stage can somehow charge the very building itself, attracting wandering spirits. And the most common purpose is to chase away mischievous spirits that may linger in such a liminal place that sees hundreds or even thousands of patrons every single day. Others insist the bulb lights the way for the ghosts still hanging around, keeping them happy and calm, or even providing them a place to dance and perform when the theater is empty. So people think the light either attracts ghosts or makes them want to go away. And then there's a weird legend about never bringing peacock feathers on stage. For some, the distinctive eye shape at the top of a peacock feather bears too striking a resemblance to the famous evil eye from Greek culture. Although many cultures have some variation of evil eye curse, the idea remains relatively the same. You can fall victim to an evil eye curse if a person casts a malevolent gaze upon you. So some people believe having peacock feathers on stage invites the evil eye in and could bring misfortune or even personal injury to the person the evil
evil eye faces. So guys, I'm sure there are so many other legends about performing and theater. So if I missed any, definitely comment them down below. But if you like me doing videos on superstitions and things that stem from history, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget, Merge Dragons is available to download for free on any device. So click my link down below to download it or scan this QR code right here on the screen. I cannot wait for you guys to play. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Dive into Jesse's treasure trove where every piece speaks mysteries. Jesse's oddities beckon. Get yours today.